हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर गोविंद राय गर्ग एंड विद मी इज डॉक्टर जानवी हेलो सर सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इनहेलेशनल एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड द इंड्यूसिंग एजेंट्स व्हिच आर गिवन बाय इंट्रावेनस रूल सो हियर द टॉपिक इज इनहेलेशनल एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट्स नाउ लॉन्ग अगो वी वर यूजिंग सम इनहेलेशनल एजेंट्स लाइक ईथर क्लोरोफॉम साइक्लोप्रोपेन ट्राइलीन सो दीज एजेंट्स वी वर यूजिंग अर्लियर बट दे हैड वन बिग प्रॉब्लम दैट दीज वर ऑल इनफ्लेमेबल इनफ्लेमेबल मीन्स इफ हीट इज अप्लाइड इन देयर प्रेजेंस दैट विल लीड टू एक्सप्लोज बट द क्वेश्चन इज वी आर गिविंग द एनेस्थेटिक एजेंट वी वॉन्ट टू डू सर्जरी फ्रॉम वेयर द हीट कम्स so you all know whenever we do any surgery we will cut something when we cut something there may be bleeding and we may need to stop the bleeding so many time the bleeding is occurring from some organ and one way of stopping the bleeding is to find the blood vessel and ligate that but practically that is not possible every time because there is diffuse area from which bleeding is coming so if we start finding that blood vessel it will consume a lot of time and still we will not be able to find many times so in older times when we were not uh, able to do this uh, do anything else that means we need to suture the vessels lot of time was consumed surgery was very long and also there was loss of blood loss so plenty of blood was required during the surgery but then we devised a method which is known as cautery so simply we will apply the heat at that point where the bleeding is occurring so whichever blood vessel is broken that will coagulate with the heat so that will lead to stoppage of bleeding yeah? so the problem with these agents were we could not do cautery while we use these agents because agar hum cautery karte hain to bleeding to band ho jayegi but aadmi ud jayega so that is obviously we will not want so these agents whenever they were used there was lot of blood loss during surgery and surgeries were quite prolonged So then we thought that why to use such agents which are causing us problem. So all the modern inhalational anesthetic agents which we use, they should have one property that they should be non-inflammable. So all the agents which we use now are non-inflammable. Okay. Then the agents we can broadly divide into liquids, volatile liquids, and gases. The gases we mainly use two gases. One out of which is used, which is nitrous oxide. and second which we will discuss but not commonly used because it is not easily available is xeno most other are liquid anesthetic agents and among these we have mainly fluorinated agents like halothene and lot of fluorines the drugs whose name end with fluorine like enfluorine isofluorine sevofluorine desfluorine and methoxyfluorine so these are the agents we will discuss in this video So here you might think, how are you going to give liquid anesthetic agents inside the patient's endotracheal tube? As you know, this is used for giving maintenance of anesthesia, and we call these as volatile anesthetic agents. So volatile means that they can change their state. They can change the state from liquid to vapor. So how do they change their state? We keep them in something which is called as a vaporizer. In the vaporizer, the liquid anesthetic agent turns into vapors. and these vapors are then carried by the carrier gases and what are the carrier gases that we commonly use first carrier gas is always oxygen so it will come like this it will take the vapors from here it becomes completely saturated with vapors and that oxygen will go into the patient's endotracheal tube and into his lungs the second carrier gas that we use we have an option either to use nitrous oxide or air so nitrous oxide acts as a carrier gas but it also acts as an anesthetic agent it is a weak anesthetic agent sir will explain about it, the gas in detail as we go ahead the other carrier gas if you don't want to use nitrous oxide or if there is any contraindication to its use we can use air instead so that is how the liquid volatile anesthetic agents enter into the patient's lungs thank you ma'am so if we discuss briefly so this is our respiratory pathway trachea bronchi bronchioles which will end in alveoli this is alveoli and we know gas exchange occurs in the alveoli this is the blood and if we give the inhalational anesthetic it will come from the trachea then bronchi bronchioles it will reach the alveoli from the alveoli it will diffuse into the blood and from the blood it will reach the brain because we want the anesthetic agent to act in the brain so it will enter the brain and it will produce anesthesia 
but it can also enter the other organs like muscle adipose tissue liver and many other organs also now which factors will affect the anesthesia caused by inhalational anesthetic agent the most important among them if we see is how much anesthetic agent we are giving so we will say that how much inspired concentration of anesthetic agent is present in the air we are giving or with carrier gas we are giving Second thing, apart from concentration, how much is the respiratory minute volume or we can say how much ventilation we are giving, alveolar ventilation we can say. These are the two factors which affect the anesthetic anesthesia caused by inhalation anesthetic agents that is alveolar ventilation and concentration of inspired gas in the uh, anesthetic gas in the inspired air. Now important thing, one thing these are gaseous agents. So when the gas will come here, it will diffuse, then it will can diffuse at other places also. Difference from other agents is normally the agents which we use as drugs, they will be continuously moving from one place to another place based on their concentration gradient. But here more important than concentration gradient is partial pressures because these are gases. So they will keep on moving till the time the partial pressure become equal in all the compartments. So we need to maintain an equilibrium of the partial pressure of these anesthetic agents and the enough partial pressure should be generated in the brain to produce anesthesia. Okay, so for that, what is the partial pressure which is seen in this area in the alveoli? We can say it is fraction of the air containing the enough partial pressure. That means fraction in the alveoli. Whereas this is the fraction in the inspired air. So when we see the ratio of fraction in the alveoli divided by fraction in the inspired air, so whenever it reaches one, means it has reached the equilibrium. So how quickly it reaches one, that will tell us what is the speed of onset of anesthesia. So, how we will want that we will want that this will become one quickly so that the person can get anesthetized quickly. So, how to speed the onset of anesthesia simply one by to increase the concentration in the inspired air. If more concentration is there, then uh, that uh, more alveoli will get quickly and that we can reach the equilibrium. But important thing we cannot increase too much because that can lead to other problems also. Second thing is we can increase the respiratory minute volume or we can say alveolar ventilation also. But alveolar ventilation will depend upon another very important property we will discuss later on which is called as blood solubility or blood gas partition coefficient. Now we have given the anesthetic agent it has come here. There must be some minimum concentration in the alveoli that can produce anesthesia. So, this is known as minimum alveolar concentration. Simply, if we see the definition, it is the minimum concentration in the alveoli to produce anesthesia. But exactly this is not the definition. The definition is minimum concentration of the inhalational anesthetic agent required in the alveoli that produce non-responsiveness to in 50% of the individual to surgical incisions. So, this is the complete definition, but simply if you see that when we give surgical incision, person is not responding. That means person has got anesthetized. So, in simple language, to understand, remember, it is the minimum concentration required in the alveoli to cause anesthesia. So, the same thing, if we talk about any other drug which is given by oral route or IV route is known as, yes, that is called as minimum dose. So, because it is in the uh, inhalational route, it will be concentration. So, if a drug is required in high dose, means it is less potent. So, similarly, you can say that MAC is inversely related to potency. Means if a drug has higher MAC, it will be less potent. If a drug has lower MAC, it will be more potent. Now, among the anesthetic agents, if you see the drug with the highest MAC will be least potent. Whereas drug with the lowest MAC will be most potent. Now, nitrous oxide is a drug which has highest MAC. Its MAC is around 104%. What do we mean by 104% is to cause anesthesia. Nitrous oxide should be present in 104% concentration in the alveoli. But we know that more than 100% is not possible. But even 100% is not possible because we need to give oxygen also. Otherwise, the person will die. So, usually the highest concentration we can give is around 70%. So that means even if we give highest concentration of nitrous oxide, that means 70%, still it will not produce anesthesia. So nitrous oxide is not a complete anesthetic agent. We cannot produce anesthesia by giving only nitrous oxide. So it is used as a supplemental gas along with the other inhalational anesthetic agents like halothane. Yeah. So this is one thing. Second, the drug with the least MAC will be the most potent drug. Now the drug which is having lowest MAC is methoxyfluorine. Methoxyfluorine, it is the most potent 
inhalational anesthetic agent because it has the lowest mac so now the ma'am will tell you about the mac of other agents also yes thank you sir very nicely explained by sir now i'm just going to make it uh, slightly more fun for you all so when sir mentioned the highest mac is least potent and the lowest mac is most potent many of you all will get confused so let me give you a day to day example now imagine you are out on a saturday night you've gone uh, to a nice bar and the bartender is telling you i will give you only 50 ml of alcohol now you have a choice to get high the choice is yours either you take 50 ml of vodka or you take 50 ml of beer okay but 50 ml se zyada tumko nahi milega abhi saturday night hai of course tum aadha daru pe ke to bahar nahi jane wale ho so it is up to you which agent you want to choose so here of course vodka is more potent as compared to beer i hope all of you all know that if you all didn't then i think we helped you in knowing that so i will choose 50 ml of vodka to get high as compared to 50 ml of beer correct so it is a similar thing whenever we talk about anesthetic agents the lesser you require to get high your getting high is becoming unconscious and not responding to surgical stimulus the more potent my agent is so that is a basic example next we have a mnemonic to remember mac now remember there are many many numbers that you need to memorize for your md exams however mac is one of those that you cannot miss the others are still optional but mac you cannot miss so let's make it easy by this mnemonic so we start off with halothin even though halothin is not available in many of the hospitals now sometimes the older examiners will ask you what is the mac of halothin so halo what is halo halo in english means uh you all must have seen in movies those angels they wear that ring on their head okay so that is called as a halo so where do angels live angels live in seventh heaven correct they live in seventh heaven so the mac of halothin is 0.7 all right that is the lowest mac the next we go for is isoflurane now see how i'm writing isoflurane i'm writing the first two letters like this and then i write it as isoflurane okay why have i written the first two letters like this i'll write the same thing over here i and s and then i just add one small line over here okay and a point here so this looks like a 4 so the mac of isoflurane is 1.4 next we have sevoflurane so for sevoflurane if you see any hindi movie where there is a boy and a girl What is their dialogue? सिवाय हम दोनों के इस दुनिया में और कोई नहीं है Correct? Proper Hindi romantic movie. They think that they are the only people in the world. So you will remember it as सिवाय हम दोनों के हम दोनों के इस दुनिया में और कोई नहीं है So then the mac of सीवोफ्लूरिन is टू And last but not the least, we have डेस्फ्लूरिन Okay? Now डेस्फ्लूरिन how do you remember? Again. take the first few letters des d e s and add an i to it okay so this becomes desi now from here you get two things one is what is the color of desi jersey desi jersey means the indian cricket team jersey okay our desi indian team so it is blue in color similarly the color of the vaporizer of desflurane is also blue that is one thing to remember the second thing you can remember is how many people are there in a desi family So if you see an Indian family usually there will be grandparents there will be parents and there will be two children so how much does that become to grandparents two then parents and then two children so it becomes to six so the mac of desflurane is six so this is an easy mnemonic to remember the mac of the most commonly asked agents and of course one more is there uh, that doesn't have a mnemonic but just to complete the list as sir has mentioned the mac of nitrous oxide is Hundred and four percent. So these are all that you need to remember. So thank you, ma'am. So that's an excellent way of remembering the MAC of different inhalational anesthetic agents. I hope you won't forget now. So we'll come back to a discussion that minimum concentration required in the alveoli to produce anesthesia is MAC, and MAC is inversely related to potency. Okay. So now after the drug has come in the alveoli, we want it to go into the blood. but that will depend upon one very important property which is known as blood solubility blood solubility so if you see in simple terms if a drug is more soluble in the blood it will it be faster acting or slower acting first of all 
so no it will be faster acting or slower acting if it is more soluble means it will be slower acting the reason is the drug has come into blood so when it has come into blood it will not like to leave the blood so it will stay in the blood it will not go to brain so when it is not going into brain in enough concentration it will take a long time again and again the blood will come into brain again little bit will be liberated so more time will be taken to make the brain enough uh, contain enough partial pressure to produce anesthesia so if a drug has higher blood uh, solubility it will be means slower acting yeah. so in simple language you can say that if the drug is more soluble means most of it will go into the blood and less will be remain as free to increase the partial pressure okay on the other hand if a drug is less soluble in the blood it will be faster acting now how to measure the blood solubility for measurement of blood solubility we have a coefficient known as blood gas partition coefficient so blood gas partition coefficient is nothing but blood solubility means more coefficient means more solubility less coefficient means less solubility that means if a drug has higher coefficient means it is more soluble in the blood means it will be slower acting if a drug has lesser coefficient that means it will be faster acting okay now the drugs with highest and lowest again okay, blood gas partition coefficient it is maximum maximum means lowest acting it is with methoxyfluorine which is slowest acting drug so methoxyfluorine is lowest acting because it has very high blood gas partition coefficient on the other hand the minimum blood gas partition coefficient is actually present with the xenon which we do not use commonly and apart from that the next one is desfluorine which has very low blood gas partition coefficient so it is fastest acting so xenon is overall fastest acting but the commonly used drug which is fastest acting is desfluorine ma'am you would like to add yes i would just like to again make this slightly more simple for you all to understand again by a very hilarious example so as sir has okay i'll draw it again now this is our target site for any anesthetic agent correct that is the brain and for the patient to get anesthetized my drug needs to go from the blood into the brain these are my lungs now when my drug is here when we are talking about blood solubility what we basically mean is when the volatile anesthetic agent enters into the blood it actually attaches to something over here and this is called as plasma protein okay so the solubility in the blood depends on how bound the volatile anesthetic agent is to the plasma protein okay now let me make this a little more uh day to day example for you all to understand imagine that your target is to have a successful marriage to have a successful marriage you should spend time with your wife correct and this plasma protein is nothing but the mother now we have a man over here who is a volatile anesthetic agent his name is sevoflurin if the man continues to remain bound to his mother will he have a successful marriage he may have but it will take time for it okay however if he is unbound if he is unbound from his mother if he is unbound from the plasma protein that will make it easier for him to spend time with his wife that will make it easier and faster to reach the target and that is a successful marriage so it is the same thing with volatile anesthetic agents the more they are bound to plasma protein in the blood the more time they take to reach the brain so the more time they will take to anesthetize the patient and the less they are bound to plasma protein the more they go to the brain act on it and quickly the patient gets anesthetized that's why that is the whole point of how blood gas partition coefficient came into play thank you ma'am that was a brilliant explanation so i hope you won't forget this also so two important concepts we covered minimum molecular concentration and blood gas partition coefficient mac is related to potency inversely related and similarly you can say blood gas partition coefficient is inversely related to speed more coefficient means faster onset less coefficient means slower onset okay so we were discussing that a drug has come into blood uh, alveoli then it can go into blood now it will also depend upon how much is the blood flow to the pulmonary circulation or pulmonary flow we can say and that will depend upon cardiac output if cardiac output is more then the blood will quickly go away take away the drug so again it will take more time for the uh, equilibrium to be attained so in areas where the blood flow is low like the person have some cardiac problem then the anesthetic agent may produce faster action or we can say quicker onset of anesthesia as compared to what we are expecting 
so that we should keep in mind yes anything more to add man no sir okay so now with this basic discussion we can go to the drug separately so we will be starting with the nitrous oxide which is the gas used nitrous oxide we all know it is also known as laughing gas nitrous oxide the special property we discussed it has a mac of 104% that means it is not a complete anesthetic agent even if we give 70% which is the highest we can give it cannot produce anesthesia so it is commonly given with other drugs along with this now it is not a good anesthetic agent but it is a very good analgesic agent that is the main property of nitrous oxide it is a very good analgesic agent it is also a poor muscle relaxant but main important advantage is a good analgesic agent now when we give nitrous oxide with other anesthetic agent what can happen if we make same diagram again this is the alveoli we have given 104% we cannot give obviously we have given 70% of nitrous oxide along with 30% oxygen used so when we give nitrous oxide it will come here so around 70% concentration will be attained in the alveoli so it has to diffuse into the blood now along with nitrous oxide we have given another anesthetic agent like halothene suppose halothene we are giving in low concentration approximately 2% just to remember 2% we have given this suppose we have made 28% of oxygen so when we give 70% of nitrous oxide nitrous oxide is having low blood gas partition coefficient so that means it will quickly diffuse so when it quickly diffuses 70% has gone so that means if 30% present here 30% present 5% present here equilibration will occur so when the nitrous oxide has gone quickly on the other hand the oxygen and halothene which were present in the alveoli they do not get that much time to diffuse because nitrous oxide is very quick to diffuse okay now what is happening that originally this was the scenario that nitrous oxide was 70% oxygen was 28 and halothene was 2% so that means out of 100 nitrous oxide was 70 oxygen was 28 and halothene was 2 now when the 35 has diffused that means nitrous oxide remains 35 the others are have not been able to diffuse that means now out of 65 we have 2 as halothene that means halothene the relative concentration increase so it will also quickly diffuse as compared to its normal value of 2% which should be present it will take longer time to diffuse but because nitrous oxide is already diffused in so much concentration so there is a relative increase in concentration in the alveoli so it can quickly diffuse also so this is known as second gas effect so second gas effect means that because of use of nitrous oxide in high concentration when it has a diffused the second gas which is being used along with this that will also diffuse quick so whatever gas is given with uh, nitrous oxide that will diffuse more quickly as compared to its normal properties okay so this is one thing second thing now we have given anesthesia with the nitrous oxide equilibration has occurred and now person has to recover when we stop nitrous oxide then what will happen whatever is in present in the blood that will also quickly diffuse it will quickly diffuse back because we are not giving more nitrous oxide so here will be lesser nitrous oxide so diffusion back will be quicker and because large amount is coming back now the oxygen will get diluted here so that can result in diffusion hypoxia diffusion hypoxia so this is a problem with the use of nitrous oxide it can cause a diffusion hypoxia during recovery so whenever we have to stop nitrous oxide before stopping nitrous oxide we will give 100 percent oxygen for few minutes although it is very short lasting but we need to give 100 percent oxygen for preventing the diffusion hypoxia how many things were I just want to give an easy way to remember second gas effect. So just think of this example that you usually go to college walking. Okay, it's about half an hour away and you walk and you go. So it will take you half an hour. But now you have a new friend and that friend has a car. So the friend says that you come along with me, sit in my car. So instead of half an hour, now it's taking you five minutes to reach college. So it's the same thing over here with our volatile anesthetic agents and nitrous oxide. Usually, if you give just halothene, it will take a longer time to reach the brain. But if you give halothene along with nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide is that good friend with the car. So, nitrous oxide goes quickly and it tells halothene, okay, you come with me. So, it takes the uh, halothene quickly to the brain and that's how the patient gets anesthetized very fast. Thank you, ma'am. So, that is about uh, halothene used in high concentration. That, that's why this problem occurs. Plus, it is very high in, uh, lipid solubility of the quick working, low blood gas partition coefficient. Now, next important thing to remember about uh, nitrous oxide is it because nitrogen is present in the body, 
and nitrous salt we are giving they are used quite interchangeably so wherever the air is present that will contain nitrogen so nitrous oxide can replace that okay? so problem is nitrous oxide has low blood gas partition coefficient so it can enter quickly in the cavities as compared to the speed which with which nitrogen is escaping so that can result in increase in pressure in these areas so that means wherever there are air filled cavities in the body there the nitrous oxide may accumulate and that can increase pressures which can cause problems like pneumothorax in case of pneumothorax the cavity is generated so their nitrous oxide may accumulate that can increase the pressure like air bullas are present so anywhere like in the volvolus there is obstructed intestinal loop so wherever the air filled cavities are present nitrous oxide can accumulate that can cause problem so we should avoid nitrous oxide anything to add uh so this is before you induce anesthesia after you induce anesthesia also there could be presence of air inside the body how do you um, get air inside the blood basically if you have a venous air embolism during mm -hmm. neurosurgery so the air can enter from the open capillaries in the brain now when that air enters the size of that air can increase 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 if you're giving nitrous oxide that's why they say whenever you are suspecting a venous air embolism, which we have discussed in detail in the whole section on neurosurgery, uh, we the first thing that you should do is switch off the nitrous oxide and turn the concentration of oxygen to 100% so that the size of that air bubble does not increase. Uh, nit nitrous oxide has a powerful effect to cause vasoconstriction, particularly it can cause constriction of the pulmonary circulation. So, it can increase the pulmonary pressure. So, nitrous oxide is also avoided in patient with pulmonary hypertension. It is avoided in pulmonary hypertension. Plus, nitrous oxide inhibit the metabolism of vitamin B12 in the body. Generation of vitamin B12. So, it can lead to deficiency of vitamin B12, particularly when given for prolonged periods like 4 hours or more. So, that can result in megaloblastic anemia and along with that, neurological symptoms also. So, these can occur due to deficiency of vitamin B12. Uh, otherwise, nitrous oxide is very safe for the liver, for the kidney. Uh, it do not affect the heart also as much as the other anesthetic agents do. But that a pro major problem with nitrous oxide is not a complete anesthetic agent. Anything more in nitrous oxide? Only one anesthetic use that I would yes. like to add is we use nitrous oxide as entonox. Entonox is 50% yes. concentration of oxygen and 50% concentration of nitrous oxide. So, here as we discussed earlier, nitrous oxide does not anesthetize the patient. So, only pain relief and mild sedation the patient will get. Where is it useful? In labor. If in the mother is getting lot of pain during childbirth, during labor, then we give her through a tight fitting mask, the 50% uh, oxygen, 50% nitrous oxide mixture that is entonox. With that, the pain is slightly relieved and the delivery is carried out easily. Now, this patient does not get anesthetized. So, that is useful to us because if she becomes unconscious, the mother can aspirate. So, what is the pin index of Antonox? Pin index of Antonox is 7. Okay. So, you can remember it has 7 letters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, pin index of Antonox is 7. So, I think the, we completed nitrous oxide with that. So, that is the one of the important drugs. The second one which is not commonly used. Sure. Uh, the next of the anesthetic agent is halothin. Although halothin is not commonly used nowadays, but uh, it is being asked in the exam. So, we can quickly discuss the important properties of halothin. You can remember from halothin. Halothin. Then we will add more properties C and C. So, halothin H for hyperthermia. Halothin can induce malignant hyperthermia. In fact, many of the inhalational anesthetic agents can induce malignant hyperthermia, but it is more common with halothin. And one of the uh, neuromuscular uh, and drug acting on neuro neuromuscular junction, that is succinylcholine, that is also involved in causing malignant hyperthermia. Halothin is a good drug for asthmatic patient because it is a potent bronchodilator. It produces bronchodilation, so we can utilize it for bronchial asthma. Then halothin can affect the liver. It is hepatotoxic. And the risk of hepatitis it increases with repeated doses of halothin so halothin should not be repeated usually we say within two to three weeks of giving halothin you know, on the first time uh, ma'am you will like to add yes so halothin hepatitis basically it was seen in olden times when uh, it was one of the very few available agents now because of that we have stopped using halothin much now halothin hepatitis is mainly seen in obese 
African American women who are more than 50 years of age. There are two types of reactions that are seen with it. There is type 1 and type 2. In type 1, it is a mild reaction. There will be just a, an elevation in the transaminase that are that is the AST, ALT level, whatever we say as SGOT, SGPT, because of minor damage to the liver. This is when the patient gets exposed to halothane for the first few times. Now, imagine that she has undergone three, four surgeries and every time she has been exposed to halothane. By the time she comes to the fourth surgery, there is an immune reaction that happens in the body. So, what is that immune reaction? When halothane is broken down, there is release of some oxygen-free radicals. Okay, Those oxygen-free radicals will go on the liver. They will go and they will change some proteins of the liver. Now, if some proteins of the liver are changed, the body, the immune system of the body will say, Are this is not mine. There is some problem with this. And the immune system starts attacking those abnormal proteins. So, when it starts attacking the abnormal proteins, it also attacks the entire liver itself. So, this is the type 2 immune mediated reaction. In this, the entire liver will fail. Mortality is 50% and the only way to treat this patient is a liver transplant. But most of them will pass away before the liver transplant can happen. Thank you, ma'am. Nowadays, we do not use halothane that much because of this particular side effect. Now, O for orthostatic hypotension. Although you all know patient will not be orthostatic while on halothane. Uh, so this is just to remember that halothane can produce hypotension. You remove the orthostatic word, it produces hypotension, decrease in blood pressure. Then this is very important property. It is tocolytic. Halothane will relax the uterus. This has one advantage as well as one disadvantage. The advantage of uh, tocolytic effect or relaxation of uterus is we can use halothane for internal version. Internal version simply means like a female has a pregnancy and the baby is not vertex, with vertex presentation. So suppose there is breech presentation or there is uh, oblique lie. So here we will want that the head should be down so that normal delivery can occur. So one thing is we can try from the abdomen, from the outside, we can try that which is known as external version. Yeah? But external version is many times not successful. The second thing is through the using the intravaginal route, we can try to manipulate the baby that is known as internal version. But in internal version, the important thing is we need to relax the uterus. If the uterus is relaxed, then manipulating the baby is easy. So we can give halothane, the uterus is relaxed, then the internal version can be easily done. So we can utilize it for internal version. But problem is because it is relaxing the uterus. So after the delivery, like when, we, when we want the uterus to contract to stop the bleeding, that will not stop. So if we use halothane during labor, there is a risk of postpartum hemorrhage. Because the uterus is relaxed, the blood vessels are not pressed enough, the bleeding will continue. So increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage is there. So halothane is avoided during the labor. So that's the tocolytic effect. Then H for heart. Like almost all the anesthetic agents, halothane will depress the heart. It will decrease the cardiac output, decrease the heart rate, etc. Then A for arrhythmias. This is important. Halothane sensitizes the heart to arrhythmogenic action of adrenaline. Meaning is the same dose of adrenaline. It has more chances of causing arrhythmias in the presence of halothane as compared to in the absence of halothane. So that means in whichever patient there is increased adrenaline or increased catecholamines, we should not give halothane. And in which patient catecholamines are more? Yes, in a patient with pheochromocytoma. So halothane anesthesia is contraindicated if we want to do a surgery for pheochromocytoma. Okay. Then like all the modern agents, this is also non-explosive. It is non-explosive. We know all the modern anesthetic agents are non-explosive. The next important point is C for chills. Post-anesthetic shivering, it is very common after halothane anesthesia. And what is the drug used to treat that post-anesthetic shivering? Yes, commonly we use pethidine. Pethidine is used to treat post-anesthetic shivering. Then lastly, halothane is a good drug for child, children. Because halothane is a bronchodilator, do not irritate the respiratory pathway that much and also has smooth induction. So it can be used for anesthesia in children. Ma'am, you want to add anything? Only a couple of points. The color of the halothane vaporizer, if you see it is red, so you need to remember that. 
and uh, the second thing is halothane gets denatured when it is exposed to sunlight so that's why we store it in amber colored bottles so amber colored bottles are used for storing the halothane so that is important about the halothane now apart from halothane the other anesthetic agent which is again rarely used nowadays is n-fluorine the only important point we need to remember n-fluorine it can it is contraindicated in E means epilepsy, means it increases the risk of seizures. So it is obviously not used in epileptic patients, but in other patients also we avoid and fluorine. Then we have isofluorine. The special characteristic of isofluorine to remember, it is the preferred anesthetic agent in a patient with card for cardiac surgery as well as for neurosurgery. So basically it do not depress the heart to that much potential. So cardiac output is maintained. So we can use it for cardiac surgery, not only cardiac, other organ surgeries, particularly liver surgery, etc. We prefer because cardiac output and blood flow to different organs is maintained. Plus it do not increase the intracranial tension to that much extent as compared to other anesthetic agent. So it is preferred in neurosurgeries also. And one point which is only theoretical point, clinically not very significant, isofluorine can result in coronary steel phenomenon coronary steel phenomenon simply means that the blood flow to the ischemic area it can be reduced further basically what happens is if this is the main coronary artery which has branches further branches suppose there is obstruction in these small branches so this area is getting less blood so normally body compensates by causing vasodilation so when vasodilation occurs the diameter of this blood vessel becomes just normal just like a normal blood vessel so this area is also getting normal blood because of vasodilation. So but isofluorine or one drug which has been banned now, uh, not used for this purpose is diperidamol. It was used earlier. These drugs what they do is they cause dilation of a normal blood vessel more than the ischemic blood vessel. So what will happen when a normal blood vessel dilate, the blood which is coming here more will be diverted to normal area and even less will come to this area. So when the less blood is coming to this area, this area uh, in, increase the risk of ischemia. Risk of ischemia will further increase in this area. So that is known as coronary steel phenomena. Also known as reverse Robin Hood phenomena. You must know Robin Hood, what he was doing. He was taking the money from the rich people and giving to poor people. But here opposite is happening. It is taking the blood from the poor people. That means ischemic vessel and giving to a normal vessel which is already rich. So it is also known as reverse Robin Hood phenomenon. So clinically it is not that much relevant in case of isofluorine. But particularly diperidamol which is was used earlier in treatment of angina is not used now because of coronary steel phenomenon. Anything you want to add? Just the color of the vaporizer of isofluorine is purple. Purple. Purple vaporizer. So that is about the isofluorine. Then we have sevoflurane. Sevoflurane, the important points to remember, sevoflurane is an excellent bronchodilator and is also a very, very smooth inducing agent. So it is preferred in children. Sevoflurane is inhalational anesthetic agent of choice in children. But the problem is sevoflurane should not be used in closed circuit. When in the closed circuit, we are using uh, uh, car carbon dioxide absorbents and that the carbon dioxide absorbent we use is soda lime. So, sevoflurane, it can react with soda lime and it produce a compound known as compound A. And compound A has been found to be nephrotoxic. So, because of this reason, sevoflurane is avoided in closed circuits. Anything more? Uh, just a practical aspect on this, actually the compound A that is formed, it was seen to be nephrotoxic in rats, not in humans. Also, the second thing is with sevoflurane, uh, you uh, have to use it at very low flow anesthesia. Low flow anesthesia means you are using less than 1 liter per minute of the carrier gas. That is when it was seen that compound A is getting precipitated. Now, every day, sevoflurane and isoflurane are the two most commonly used gases. Till date, no one has reported nephrotoxicity with the use of sevoflurane in humans. Sevoflurane is also very commonly used for daycare surgery. For daycare, we want uh, the kind of gases which will get eliminated quickly from the body. So, sevo and des are one of the best choices for that. Thank you. So, the next one is desflurane. Desflurane, it has very low boiling point around 23 degrees. So that means at room temperature it can boil. 
so it has to be kept in a special vaporizer that is one problem but second problem dust fluorine is highly pungent so that can irritate the respiratory pathway and that will produce lot of secretions and even bronchospasm also so it is not a good choice in children in particular and dust fluorine we discussed it is very very fast acting because of low blood gas partition composition uh, since it is pungent in nature, we also don't prefer it in asthmatic patients because it can cause irritation of the airway and lead to reflex uh, spasm of the bronchi. The second thing, important point is we prefer to use this in obese patients. So whenever you have someone for bariatric surgery uh, or an obese patient for any other surgery, now your volatile anesthetic agent through the blood, it will not go just to the target site that is brain. It will also go to the muscle, to the tissue and to the fat. So, since they have so much fat, the desflurane goes and it sits in the fat. Okay. So, you need any volatile anesthetic agent that will go quickly and will also come back quickly. So, since desflurane has quick onset and quick offset, when you switch it off, quickly it will also come out of the fat and it will wake the patient up at the end of surgery. So, the desflurane has very, very fast onset as well as offset. So very quickly the person can recover also. So that is about dust fluorine. The next one is methoxy fluorine, which is not used nowadays. The main reasons why it is not used, one, it is very, very slow acting. It has highest blood gas partition coefficient, very, very slow acting. And second very important point, although it is highest potent drug, but the main problem is it releases lot of fluoride on metabolism. And that can lead to nephrotoxicity. High output renal failure can occur. So, nephrotoxicity is the major problem with methoxyfluorine. So, we do not use it anymore. Just a point on, uh, sir said that methoxyfluorine is the most potent. Why is it the most potent? Its MAC is the lowest. So, how to remember the MAC of methoxyfluorine? So, me, mean means one person, correct? So, write one. Then, hoxy. Hoxy ka just think as hexa. Okay, hexa is another word for six. So, the MAC of methoxyfluorine is 0.16. So, MAC of methoxyfluorine is 0.16 and of nitrous oxide is 104%. You need to remember these two minimum. Now, one of the anesthetic agent which is not easily available or not commonly used is xenon. So, xenon is a gas you must uh, remember in the periodic table in the earlier classes 11-12th we discussed. It is present in which group? Yes, it is present in group of noble gases noble gases so it is a non-reactive gas which is present in the environment but xenon has the properties of ideal anesthetic almost all the properties of ideal anesthetic are present in this so what should be the property of a drug to be used as an ideal anesthetic so obviously one it should be anesthetic it should produce anesthesia nitrous oxide ki dhokha nahi dena chahiye. xenon is anesthetic agent it can produce anesthesia although it is required in high concentration its mac is also high nearly 70 percent so, but when we give 70%, it can produce anesthesia. Second, we should require the gas and no other gas is required or no other substance should be required. That means it has a good analgesic property also and good muscle relaxant property also. Apart from that, it should be fast acting and we know xenon has lowest blood gas partition coefficient. It is fastest acting. Then it should be smooth. It should not cause bronchoconstriction or irritant of the respiratory pathway, which is not present. Then it should not have side effects on the liver, kidney or other organs. It is safe. So almost all good points are present in xenon. But still we do not utilize it commonly. Reason is it is not available. So by which reaction we can form xenon? By no reaction. Remember it is a noble gas, non-reactive. It cannot be synthesized. So, it is isolated from environment only and already very low is present in the environment. Plus, we require 70%. So, that will make it extremely, extremely cost. So, because of non-availability and very high cost, we do, do not utilize xenon very commonly. But if available, it will be the one of the ideal anesthetic agents. So, anything more to add? Nothing. Xenon is actually like, I was just trying to think like which actor, either Shah Rukh Khan or Ranbir Kapoor. <laughs> They are ideal, they are handsome, good families, they have lots of money, very successful. But at the end of the day, there is only one Shah Rukh Khan, so everyone <laughs> can't marry him. So, Zenon is like that. <laughs> so, Zenon is Shah Rukh Khan of <laughs> anesthesia. <laughs> so, thank you, ma'am. So, this is about the inhalational anesthetic agents. Thank you very much.